Welcome into another edition of the Peyton Chatney Show, presented by The Rogue. I'm Neil McCready. That is, as you might guess, Peyton Chatney. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we talked. Last week, I was out of town at the end of the week. Uh, Ole Miss had a super busy week last week, two midweek games, and then a travel day, and then they played at UCF, of course. So we'll talk about that series. Uh, we're doing this on, uh, what's today, Tuesday afternoon. I've been thinking Peyton all day long. Today's Wednesday, but today is Tuesday as we record this. Uh, Ole Miss uh, rained out on their uh, Tuesday game, and uh, they will play uh, Alcorn State Wednesday and then um, get ready on Thursday for a weekend series against Oral Roberts, the last non-SEC weekend of the season. The Rebels head to Auburn in a couple of weeks to uh, get started with SEC play, so we'll probably start touching on some of those things uh, as we go. But uh, first, I want to tell you real quick before we get rolling, this show brought to you by The Rogue, 4450 I-55 North in Jackson, or therogue.com. Uh, make sure that uh, you go in or you go online, check out the collegiate collection for the Ole Miss fan in your life, for you, or uh, if, if it's a Mississippi State fan, Alabama, LSU, Auburn, whatever the case may be, they've got some of that gear as well. But a, a great selection of Ole Miss collegiate collection gear there at The Rogue, and also some of the best items from uh, Peter Millar, Martin Dingman, Jack Victor, Halsey, True Grit, Duckhead, so many other name brands that uh, you've come to know and love over the years, so whether it's just for uh, casual or whether it's for work or for nightlife, the uh, Rogue has the perfect something just for you. Again, 4450 I-55 North in Jackson or the Rogue.com. Peyton, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Man, I'm good. Appreciate you. Uh, I know we've had a little trouble catching schedules because that's the life of a, of a baseball player. And last week it was the life of a, of a journalist that had a couple of things going on. So um, there's a couple of things I want to get to, a lot of things I want to get to. First, um, you guys went on the road last week. You went to, uh, you went to UCF. I'm, I'm going to dance around this a little bit. People will probably know what we're talking about, but I don't want to, and I know you don't either. So I'll, I'll ask it this way. There was a moment in the Friday game, the first game of the series, you guys took two out of three, uh, where uh, Mike Clement called timeout, talked to uh, McCants about something before, I think McCants, I think the at-bat ended in a home run. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, was, what was that about? What can you tell me about? I think it's going to sort of lead us into a, a, a bit of a conversation about some of the unwritten rules of baseball, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious what was your perspective of that moment? Yeah, so, well, first of all, I didn't even know uh, what exactly had happened. Whenever he called time, he looked over at Coach B and said, hey, somebody's stealing our signs. Um, but what had happened was before that, he put on, um, I think it was maybe a bunt sign, and, and you could see somebody go over and tell, hey, the coach something, blah, 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 like, uh, on the UCF side. And then it didn't end up happening. Coach puts on a steal after that. And again, same thing. You can see somebody go over and say something to the coaches at UCF. Uh, so right away, Coach Clemens like, something's off. Calls time, talks to McCants. Mainly he talked to McCants because he needed to tell I – th- I believe it was JB who was on first base. Um, he needed to wipe off the sign because, you know, they obviously know what's exactly coming here. Um, luckily, TJ hit a home run, um, and it ended up being well. But – I think people know what we're going to talk about here, but I think, I mean, I kind of see both sides and I don't, I don't necessarily agree with it, but, but I understand it. And um, yeah, it's, it's a, it was a touchy subject kind of, but, but um, it made for a really fun game. I got to say that. I I said this on our first show, obviously I was never the player that you are, but I think, you know, I've played a lot of baseball and I've certainly watched a ton of baseball and you have too. And baseball's a funny game, right, with with unwritten rules, because there's a lot of rules in baseball yeah. that aren't exactly in the rule book that have to be kind of respected and and um, and they're they're kind of fluid, right? They're not they're not hard set it's in stone because rules. they are literally unwritten rules. Like somebody's opinion on it is completely different. Um, and I think that's still in this case. Um, UCF's opinion about it is definitely different than, than our opinion on it. Um, because yeah, we probably still should have changed our signs. We probably should have mixed some things up. Um, but I think there was just a little bit of like a trust factor there that, that, uh, 
some people thought was, it was broken. And yeah, I mean, so how did general, you guys, how did you guys navigate the rest of that weekend, knowing that on Friday someone over there knows your signs? We we went completely different signs and a different indicator almost every single inning, at least the Friday game. After that, like after we figured that out, we went a different indicator um, every single inning. And then on Saturday, we switched it up to something totally different and same with Sunday, like something that we've never done before, you know, in the past or anything. Um, we, we really don't put that many signs on in general. Like we don't actually use um, that many or ever actually call like a certain play or anything like that, um, which makes it easier. But we just had to completely change it up just for that weekend. Um, you guys, I'll get to a couple other things involving, in, involving that, but where do you stand on, um, cause it's, it's something that gets discussed, right? A lot. Young people love the game. They love the emotion of the game, like major leaguers. They love, yeah. you know, um, the, the bat flip, the guy that hits the home run and, and watches it. They love watching pitchers who get emotional. Um, on, on the on the field after a big strikeout or whatever, you and I were talking about this kind of before we got started. When you when you're on the field playing, um, you, and you play, and I've seen you. I mean, you're there's a, there's a one of the one of the clips yeah. you're most you know famous for, if you will, is that your emotion at the end of that Ole Miss Louisville game a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, where you just got caught up in the moment and you spiked <laughs> the ball and stuff. I, where do you sort of stand on what emotion is? is permissible and what emotion is over the line and how do you manage that in the middle of the adrenaline pumping and it being emotional? I mean, I know that's a weird question, but I think you know what I mean. No, no, it's tough. And, and I think obviously I in general play with a lot of emotion. So I'm all for um, showing a ton of emotion. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is kind of what we've already talked about is, is as long as it is towards your own team, as long as the emotions are, are not talking mess about the other team or, or even the bat flips. Like there's a certain fine line. Like for me, if you hit a homer and you know, it's gone, I'm okay with you setting down the bat jogging, you, no need to sprint. Like it's gone. There's literally no point. It's like, um, I'm not saying you need to throw the bat up 20 feet in the air, but if it's gone, it's gone. Like if, even if I'm a pitcher and I know I'm maybe biased because I am a hitter, but if I was a pitcher and someone pimped a homer off me, you know what? Like, what am I going to say to him? I, I just let out, I gave up a homer. And I think vice versa for pitchers, if a pitcher strikes me out, I've got no problem with him yelling into his dugout, you know, going crazy. As long as you're not looking at me talking. Yeah, to, you but know. if he yells at you and talks trash to you after yeah, striking you then out. It's, it's totally it's different. different. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And, but that's where I think college baseball in general is just so much fun and, and so much fun to watch, even whenever we're not playing, it's just like, the emotions are like, they're true raw emotions. Like the kids really actually care about winning. And, and even these early games like uh, against UCF and, and yes, they all matter the same, but we're not, you know, in the SEC tournament, we're not in a regional or anything, but I mean, we are playing these games like, like our life depends on it. And um, especially Friday, we're all heated and everything, but uh, yeah, I, I love the emotions. I love every bit of that. And, and, Coach B even in, had to kind of tell us to tone it down a little yeah. bit after Friday, I think just because we were all, you know, um, fired up and ready to go and stuff. So so there was a little bit that we had to tone down, but I, I'm all for it. Is it is it make it difficult when some of the some of the games roll around where it's not as emotional that you have to you have to feed off of something else? Because, I mean, you know, like you said the, the UCF games. Um, you know, the parts that I watched, like you could tell there was a little something in the, in the air. Yeah. And, and I was like, man, this is, they're not playing Mississippi state or LSU or Arkansas or, you know, Vanderbilt or, or some yeah. of those opponents where all you have to do is just get on the field with each other and look at each other's uniforms and That's everybody wild. gets going. I mean, this yeah. is a, you know, this is a little different deal. And but how do you, how do you sort of manage that part of it where you're like, Hey, this is a long season. And also knowing that you're going to have some games where you, you have to manufacture a, yeah. you know, a different motivation i suppose and even if it's not necessarily the opponent we're playing like it could be the weather like if we were to play today it would be tough to get you know true energy out there like because it's you know probably 40 degrees and raining right now um coach b has this famous saying that he likes to say to us is byoe like bring your own energy 
Um, and especially on Sundays, I think that's the most important days is because in, in coach B talks about this Sunday, this would be the fourth time. So if we were at UCF and it's Sunday, this is the fourth time that we've gone to their park. Like it's nothing new now it's, we've played it. It feels normal. Um, we're all really tired probably because we have an early game on Sunday and a late game on Saturday. Um, but I, especially baseball, baseball is such a, a momentum game in my opinion. Like if you can just get a spark, if you can get the ball rolling, then it kind of just trickles down. And so I think energy is the start of all of that. If you can, if you can just start hyped up, start going, uh, it leads to really good baseball in my opinion. That's not always easy to do, but it's kind of, I think what helps is we have a little bit of an older team, a little bit more of a mature team, and, and we all kind of understand that. So yeah. let's get to a couple of these things because that you, you, it's a perfect segue into a, a couple of topics that I wanted to ask you about. One was, I mean, in an ideal world, obviously, you guys go 60-0 and 0 and you win the national championship and nobody ever beats you and you win every yeah. game by the run rule. And that's That'd be not, cool. <laughs> that would be easy. It'd be kind of cool. But it, it's not particularly realistic. And you guys saw that on, on uh, Saturday. You, you ran into a really good pitcher and uh, a, a game got close at the end and, and they beat you, I guess, one nothing in, I think it was 12, 12, 12 yeah. innings on a, on a, on a walk-off. Obviously, you don't ever want to lose a game, but sometimes you find out a little bit about a team after a loss, how they bounce back, um, you know, how they respond, because because uh, you know they they win and they have an, um, a celebration in the outfield that I, I had no problem with. I mean, they would just yeah. beat the number two ranked yeah. team in the country at their place and want to walk off an extra innings. Of course, they See, some people will probably get mad at that, but I don't care at all. I don't care if their whole the fans rush the whole stadium. Like, yeah, I think that's won. awesome. Yeah, they won yeah. the game. They, they celebrate. Yeah. But the next day you turn around and you're like, okay, let's, we have to respond. And you guys really did. I mean, you had a dominant game on, mm -hmm. on Sunday. And, again, I know it's super early in the season, but is that something that you can kind of build off of moving forward? No doubt. And, and as weird as it may sound, like I think we needed a, a loss or at least we needed a tough game like that because we haven't necessarily had one um, before that. And SEC play, anything can happen, anything goes. Um, but, yeah, UCF was way better than – at least I thought they were going to be in. And, and, um, but yeah, kind of, kind of uh, to be able to turn around and on, on a Sunday like that. And coach Clement even said it credit to, to the Saturday's pitchers. They were phenomenal. Um, but we knew if we could get Sunday starter out of the game early and we could get into that pen is going to be a lot of the guys that we've already seen before. And, and at that point we have a lot of confidence in the office that there's, we were going to be able to, you know, put some runs together. Um, but Saturday's game was was crazy. But the only thing I liked about it is um, I think we truly got beat. Like, I don't think we beat ourselves. They, I think they actually were the better team that day, um, which is kind of a good takeaway for us. Speaking of offense, you guys lose, at least for a little while, one of your more explosive offensive players in, in Kevin yeah. Graham. Um, so it's kind of a twofold question here, Peyton. I'm curious, how big of a blow is that for you guys? And then on the flip side, you guys went through this a year ago with Tim Elko getting hurt, I guess, it's kind of mm -hmm. like late March, early April, if I recall correctly, and he missed some time before he came back with kind of the heroic comeback that he came back with. But but he was out for a while where you guys had to manage offensively without him. Can you fall back on that experience a little bit here going into the next few yeah. weeks, you know, I think, for sure. Graham? I think for sure. And I think even more so this year, um, we have we have more depth, in my opinion, than we did last year. Like, um it's kind of surprising. I found out the same about Kevin today, um, which I, I don't think anybody actually thought he was going to need surgery or he was going to need um, like how long he's off for, because we talked to him on Sunday, like, Hey, are you going to be good? He was in a, a little brace, but nothing crazy. He's like, yeah, it's not broken. I just landed on it weird. I'll be fine. And then all of a sudden, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's definitely going to hurt having Kevin out. Um, but we've got so many guys in this lineup right now that are hot that don't necessarily even have that many ABs just because our offense is so like stacked. It's kind of crazy. Um, I don't know necessarily what we're going to do defensively. Like, I don't know who's going to play left yet. Um, but I think we'll be okay. I mean, it's going to hurt not having Kevin, but I feel like we got enough guys, especially this year, to be able to fill that role. Um, some There's been some talk. Mike Bianco talked about shaking up the pitching rotation a little bit. Gaddis is going to go on Saturday instead of Friday, moving some things around. All right, I'm sorry, Friday instead of Saturday is yeah, what the show yeah. said. Um, do you as an infielder pay attention to any of that stuff? Does that, do, do you 
you look into that at all, or do you just say, "Hey, I'm 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 going to go out and play behind whoever's throwing." Um, kind of. I do just because somebody else told me. Like I had no idea that was even a thing until somebody uh, mentioned it to me. I don't pay too much attention to it. I mean, all those guys are my friends, and and I want everybody to, to succeed. And so I'm happy for one guy to be able to step up. I'll be sad for somebody else to sit down and everything like that. Um, but I don't think it's going to affect too much and it's not something I'm going to look into too hard. Cause at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who we throw. I think it's just going to be, uh, at least for me, it's not going to matter because I still have to <laughs> field every ground ball and, and worry about hitting. So no, I don't pay too much attention to it. You we talked about road trips. You and I, I think it was the first show we talked about home getting, you know, home games. You like to go to the ballpark seven hours early or whatever yeah, and, yeah. and all that stuff on the road. Obviously you, you, you don't have that, that luxury, not all the time. What is, what are road days like for you? Are they, are they long and arduous waiting for games or do you, you have like a totally different routine since you can't do the routine that you like to do at Swayze? It depends on, on the day. Like if we have a late game, we always have a mandatory – we have a full itinerary, first of all, that is stacked almost, I mean, to the minute of something that we have. Um, so we have mandatory breakfast at a certain time, whatever, maybe 7.30 to 9, I don't know exactly. Um, but after that, I'm pretty much up. And then there's not as much we can do. Um, a lot of the guys on the team love playing cards, so I'll go into somebody's room and play a bunch of cards. Some people take a nap or, or – do homework or something like that. Um, my routine within away games is it's tough because we have a certain schedule for each thing, but even with these games, like we have a hitters meeting and I'll still get there 20 minutes early to the hitters meeting and just hang out and talk. Cause I think that's the biggest part of one of the biggest parts of um, our team and especially our offenses. We're such a tight group and we're able to fellowship and hang out and um, just be, you know, an actual friend group, not just a team. Um, so my routine is really just doing whatever everybody else is doing. I don't care necessarily. So whatever room everybody's in, I'll be there hanging out. Um, I don't have as much routine. I wish I did, but I can't. On the bus rides, are you a listen to music guy? Are you watch a watch a movie or or what sort of your what, how do you pass uh, the time? Or do you guys just hang out? Well, first of all, we had uh, the Rebel Idol thing, which is awesome. I love doing that. All the new guys have to come in and sing. Um, it's a great tradition. It's a great way to start the whole uh, trip. Who was good? I, who was terrible? Who who was who was decent and who was just awful? Um, my opinion, he didn't end up winning. Kemp was the best one out there because it was the most surprising to me. I thought he was going to go up there and he's got a thick country accent. I thought it was going to be super boring and, and um, but no, he killed it. Like he did way better than I thought he was going to do. Um, who was bad? Delucia was bad. He was terrible. Like he got, he got booed before he even started because you're supposed to give an interesting fact and his fact was boring and nobody was into it. So, uh, but that's always so much fun. Cause you can tell who, who is in stage fright and, and then who, who is. And, um, but yeah, that's so much fun on the bus. I'm a music guy kind of, but we love to play this game called mafia. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's like this, it's going to be hard to explain, but basically there's one narrator, everybody's heads down. We all have different roles and there's a uh, mafia side. And then there's a civilian side and the civilians try to kill the mafia and the mafia tries to kill civilians. It's like this whole strategic game. So we play that or we'll play cards. We'll um, do whatever. And there's people, it's kind of the bus is divided up into people in the front who don't want to hang out and want to just listen to the music and, and chill or take a nap. And then the back of the bus is like the rowdy side. And um, I'm always in the back. I, I'm not going to be I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It's a lot of fun. I love road trips so much. I think we bond and, and hang out as a team. It's so much more fun that way. So I know you're home, in... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Home, I get to hang out with like, my roommates or, or, or the people that live right next to me and stuff, but we don't get to all hang out as a team. It's almost like you're forced to here, which is awesome. I know you guys didn't get a chance to do any amusement park stuff, but you were in Orlando, which begs the question, are you a Disney guy or are you a universal guy? In other words, like, are you like a roller coaster guy or are you a Disney park guy? Um, I'm, I'm going to say I'm a roller coaster guy. I don't know. I don't know when's the last time I've even been able to go to, um, or roller coaster park or, or Disney or anything like that. But I think roller coaster, I mean, I had a lot of fun 
whenever I was little going to him. Um, Coach B, because <laughs> like the first thing Coach B said whenever he got here, whenever we got there was, listen, this is a business trip. We're not here to go to <laughs> Disney World and hang out and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think I like roller coasters. I actually love heights, which is super weird. Like, um, I love the the that weird feeling in your stomach whenever I'm, you know, whatever I'm doing. I don't know. Super high up. It's fun. You know, it's funny about roller coasters with me, and I've never figured out why I'm this way, but I'm the exact same way. Once I get on a roller coaster, and once it starts that, you know, tick, tick, tick yeah. up, yeah. I just start laughing, and I, I can't <laughs> stop, and I don't know what it is, and people look at me like, what is your deal? And I don't know. I can't. It's it's yeah. an impulse that gets hit, and I just start laughing. To me, the whole ride is funny. All the people that get worked up and freaked out, it's funny. And, I mean, I, I'm not lying. I'm nervous. You know, you're going up the thing. Yeah. You that are nervous, thing when you right before you get to the top and you flip and you know that you know your stomach's going to go into your throat for a minute yeah. you're always like god i hope i don't puke or whatever but but at the same time you just laugh. i just always start laughing and everybody who sits by me is like man you're, you're obnoxious and I'm, <laughs> I'm not i'm not trying to be it just it's it's just for whatever reason those things are funny to me and i love them they're like a high you get like this and adrenaline. i love everybody else freaking out. yeah like yeah. i would love watching you know my buddies panicking and stuff yeah I yeah love there's it. always like some girl or some old guy on the thing and you can tell that this is just not where he or she wanted to be and they yeah. they're they're in it and it's in their head and you know i don't know it's just kind of funny all right mm -hmm. um last thing i'm curious uh and i know no disrespect towards alcorn state or oral roberts who's off to a pretty good start actually oral roberts has mm -hmm. a couple of good wins under their belt already but do you catch yourself getting kind of uh I don't know, restless, anxious, ready to, to play some SEC games, knowing that that's coming? Um, I mean, I would definitely be lying if I said I was just as excited to play, you know, midweek games as I am to play SEC games. Um, but the funny thing about me, and people always joke about it, like I'm such aloof when it comes to that type of things. Like I didn't even know we played Oral Roberts this weekend. Like I don't, I don't know that kind of stuff. I don't know the schedule. I don't pay attention. I don't know what time we play tomorrow. So it's hard for me to get super excited about, I guess it's kind of a good thing. Cause I don't pay attention to, to the weekend, but yeah, um, we're definitely ready for, for SEC play. And I'm super excited. And this weekend was a great weekend for us. We needed that. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. I don't know how the SEC is going to shape up. I think this year is going to be kind of weird. Do you, I was, it leads into my last question. I was curious, do you pay any attention at all to rankings and stuff at this point? Because if you look at it, it's like, well, the whole SEC is just like in a right here in a line. And, and yeah. Texas, who's going to join the SEC, is number one. And then it's you guys. And then I think it's Arkansas. And then LSU's pretty close there. And you know, Tennessee's off to a pretty good start. It's all these teams in the league that are right there. Do you pay any attention to that at all? Or do you just sort um, of guard it? I don't not pay attention to it but i'm not super super invested into it like i know who the the top teams are and everything like that um but i think it's every bit of it is going to change by the end of the year and it's it's just how it always is because it's baseball and everything um but yeah i pay attention to it and i think you can take it two different ways like it's good to believe in it whenever you're super you know high ranked and everything like that but it also you don't want to believe into it whenever you're you know ranked 22nd or whatever it may be whenever you feel like you're ranked higher so i think you kind of have to pick and choose what you listen to and what what you know you pay attention to and everything like that but yeah i mean kind of what i was saying earlier i think that as you see especially this year is going to be weird like i don't know how everything's going to shape up because there's teams now that aren't starting off that hot but i, I guarantee you when we play mississippi state they're going to look like the best team in the country like it's just the way it is and um I think this year's going to be super weird. I don't know how it's all going to turn out, but I'm excited, no doubt. When you see all these pitchers going down around the around yeah. the league, or does it make you like so thankful you're an infielder, or what do you? Which just I, mean, I know you and you know some of these uh, guys too, so I'm sure that while on one hand you're like I'm glad I don't have to face him, on the other hand I'm thinking you're probably you hate it for the guy, right? Well, yeah, I would never ever wish it upon anybody. I mean, that's horrible. I think that's just kind of a. I am thankful I'm not a pitcher. Um, I wouldn't ever, ever be able to, I'd probably throw 75 off the <laughs> mound. Um, but yeah, I think especially now, like I saw a tweet the other day when I think it's so true is like 92 is the new 88. Like the Velas are just getting faster and faster and faster. The game's um, turning into a really dominant pitching game. 
And um, it's kind of starting to, you know, people are really starting to get injured. I think there's more injuries every year. Maybe not. I just don't pay attention to it enough. But it just seems like this year and last year, there's a lot of people that are getting um, TJ really just any any arm problem. So I think the new the new era of whatever it's going to be is just how to stay healthy. It's not even going to be how to stay how to throw hard. Yeah, um, I, I look forward to talking to you about that later in the season because like I know there's a kid for Tennessee that's over 103 on the gun. Yeah, someone goes, well the gun's hot. I'm like, well it's not that hot. I mean he's it can't be it can't yeah. be that. Hot. He's, if, if it's 101 instead of 103, that's still. I think it's awesome. I, I was telling people today, I can't wait to face him. Like, I don't, I don't know what he's going to do against me or and how it's going to end up, but I just want to see like, what does one Oh three look like? Like I, you know what I mean? Yeah. And maybe he's going to blow by me. Maybe not. I have no idea, but I think it's going to be really fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to talking to you after that series and finding out what yeah. one Oh three sounded yeah. like. Cause I, I know what it kind of looks like, but I'm fascinated <laughs> from that perspective. What did it sound like? I mean, yeah. Cause I got to think you can hear it at that speed. Yeah. I uh I actually got I faced um Wiggins from Arkansas last year and he whenever they were here and he topped one at a hundred against me. Um luckily he threw it low and away and it was like kind of a pitch where low and away pitches are kind of the easiest to see, like they're uh especially for for a fastball. Um so it doesn't it didn't look quite as hard as I would have thought a hundred looked like because just where it was located. But yeah, I mean I can't imagine I a hundred to a hundred and three is probably such a big jump it's i don't know i'm excited i think it's gonna be cool yeah it, I, I can't even i mean I, literally i can't fathom it I, I think the hardest i've ever seen like standing in a batter's box was 90 91 and yeah i mean i just i can't imagine what like 102 looks like i, I yeah. I'm, I'm not sure i'd see it I, I guess i guess if you're if you do it enough you get conditioned to it and your, your eyes get trained a little i guess bit. i don't know how you get conditioned to 100 <laughs> i don't know it's nuts well, hey, listen, uh, best of luck the rest of this week and this weekend. I look forward to visiting with you next week on the Peyton Chetney Show. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Don't forget, uh, check out The Rogue, 4450 I-55 North in Jackson or therogue.com. Make sure that you tell them how much you appreciate them making this show possible. So for Peyton, I'm Neil. Talk to you next time.